Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. We're so thankful for everybody who's here today. Amen. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen, amen, amen. And so uh, thank you. We we'll want to make mention, if you did not uh, get your card from our Marks of Devotion meeting this morning, you need a card. Uh, we've, we've got uh, extras. And if you were not there, uh, Brother Harper, what we're going to do, Sister Emily, what we're going to do next Sunday morning, those who were not there during Sunday school class, we will have another Marks of Devotion meeting for those who weren't able to be there. And it will be in, in the office uh, next door. So those who were unable to be for our Marks of Devotion meeting today, uh, be during Sunday school class next Sunday morning. We will have a, a, a secondary meeting to make up for those who miss. So uh, praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is so good. And I, I failed to mention last uh, Sunday. Uh, and I do apologize. Uh, uh, but I'm glad that he is here again today. Amen. He's starting his little life out right in the house of God. And we're thankful to have Julian here today. We're Praise thankful that God. Julian is a part of the Star Rock Church family. Let everybody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, uh, so you make sure, amen, uh, don't, uh, you, we know that uh, uh, you pray for him. Don't get in his little face because we want him to stay healthy and we want him to stay uh, strong. But you pray for him. You pray uh, for his family. Amen. We're, yes. uh, uh, I thank God for Julian yes. and I amen. thank God that Julian's in this church and I want to see him grow up and yes. be a great man of God. Yeah. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 So congratulations. Yes. Uh, uh, to Sister Alex and to uh, uh, that proud grandma that's back there. Yes. Amen. amen. And we are just thankful, amen, that he is here. And we want to do our best uh, to make sure that this young man, uh, a little boy, but he will grow into a young man, uh, is brought up uh, in the fear and the admonition of the Lord amen. and being a strong part of this uh, uh, church, the Lord willing, and everybody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Men, don't forget. Uh, today at 6 o'clock. And also, those of you, if you've ever been a part of our Loaves and Fishes program, we have to have a meeting today. Uh, we, we, there have been some reorgan reorganizing and some restructuring uh, through the uh, Tigapay, uh, who had been helping us or had been the middleman in all of this. Uh, uh, but it, they, they are not going to, this month, be able to supply us with the food that we normally get from them. Uh, and uh, I spoke with Second Harvest this week, uh, and we are going to hopefully be able to step out and do this on our own, uh, and we won't be involved with any other uh, church or anyone else. We'll just be doing it ourselves, uh, but, but we need to meet today, and uh, we've got uh, some things that we need to take care of, so if you've ever been a part of any of it, uh, especially the loaves and fishes, the thing that we do here on Wednesdays, uh, uh, one Wednesday a month, uh, we need people who can volunteer, people who can help, uh, uh, people who can go to Second Harvest and, and do our shopping for us uh, and things like that. So we need you uh, to meet with us uh, about five minutes after service. Uh, we'll just meet here in the middle uh, and we'll get this taken care of. Amen. And I apologize for taking so long for that announcement, but I believe the Lord is leading and guiding and directing us, and so we want to follow Him. And the Lord's opening the door uh, for us to minister uh, without any uh, any anything prohibiting us. Uh, and and I'm thankful for that. Amen. So I'm so glad to be a part of the church. Amen. At the beginning of the year, I'm so glad to be a part of the church. And somebody say Amen. 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 Acts chapter two, verse forty-two through forty-seven. Uh, amen. Uh, it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Right. Everybody say the apostles' doctrine. The apostles doctrine. Amen. Right. The apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in uh, prayers and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things common and they sold all their possessions and their good and parted them to all men as every man had need and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness uh, and singleness uh, of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily at such as should 
be saved. Amen. amen. The church should be growing every day. And everybody say amen. 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 We're going to have a baptismal service today. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, somebody's uh, a little Javier is going to get baptized in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. We're believing yes. God uh, that, that He's going to fill Javier with the Holy Ghost. Uh, we're believing God that even at this young age, uh, amen, when, a, yes. uh, when a, a child makes a commitment, God honors it just yes. as He does uh, when That's an right. adult makes a commitment. Right. Uh, God amen. looks at the pure heart of a child just as He does uh, uh, the heart of an adult. Uh, amen. But this church, amen, is here for Javier. Can somebody say amen? amen. This amen. church is here for Julie. Can somebody say amen? amen? This church is here for Sister Mona. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen? The church is a community of people and we are here to work together and we're here to grow for Jesus Christ. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. If you're thankful for God in the church, put your Bible down and let's give the Lord a great big hand. Thank you. God bless you and you may be seated in Jesus name. The next couple of weeks we're going to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart. We're going to talk about the church. I want you to understand that the church is God's design. Right. The church is God's design. If you have a problem with the church, you've got to, you have a problem with God. Uh -huh. Because God is the one who designed and who ordained the church. Yes, and if you come to the point or the place in your life that you don't think you need the church, then guess what? You think you don't need God either. That's good because question. God is a part of the church. And the church is a part of God. That's and just right. as much as you need God, you need a church that is full of the Spirit of God. Yes. Amen. We want a church that works in perfect harmony. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise That's the Lord. God's design that the church work in perfect uh, harmony. Uh, amen. I don't know if you've ever heard a barbershop quartet uh, or if you've heard an a cappella group uh, where they will get together and work uh, and sing a song in perfect three-part harmony. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I'm telling you what, there's something about harmony. Uh, uh, you know, you and I could get up here and sing together, Brother Harper, and we might sound all right, but if we don't get in perfect harmony. Uh, uh, if we don't get that three part working together, it sounds a whole lot better. Uh, uh, when we get up here and we're in harmony together, the church needs to be in yes. harmony. Uh, everybody needs to be working together. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 Acts chapter 2 verse 42 to 47 talks about how the first church uh, operated. Uh, the Bible tells me the first church uh, devoted themselves uh, to the apostles' teaching uh, the breaking of bread and of prayer. Amen. I thank God for Acts 2.38. I thank God for the doctrine that the apostles preached and taught. Amen. That's something that they got on the day of Pentecost. They began to work together through the moving of the Holy Spirit and design a church and a doctrine the way that God wanted it to be designed. And Paul said, if we or an angel come preaching any other doctrine, any other gospel, Anything that is not uh, what, what, what we started out with, let him be a curse. It didn't matter if it was an angel from heaven. If it didn't line up with the apostles' doctrine, it wasn't right. This church must be preaching and teaching the apostolic doctrine. And somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Teaching and breaking the bread and prayer. Many miraculous things happened in the first church. You read in verse 43, people sold their things so they could help others in need. They met in the temple in the temple and in each other's homes to pray and learn and to eat together. This church must be working together. Folks, we must be in fellowship. We must be in unity. We must love one another more than we love anything else in this world. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. They met in the temple. Amen. They met in each other's homes. Uh, they they prayed. Uh, they got together not to watch TV, and uh, they got together uh, not to. Uh, they got together to pray. 
They got together to talk about the Word of God. Nothing wrong uh, with the football game. And some of us will get together uh, and enjoy something like that. But I want you to understand, there are some more important things than a game. That's there are right. more important that's things exactly than right. hanging out. Amen. amen. And that's getting together and lifting up the name of God. Somebody say amen. 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 We gather together uh, just once a month for a men's prayer meeting, for a ladies' uh, prayer meeting, for a youth prayer uh, meeting. Uh, prayer meeting. Some folks say, well, I can't, I can't make it. Honey, you need to be in prayer just as much as you need to be in a Sunday morning service. Amen. You need to be in prayer just as much as you need to be in a Wednesday night Bible study. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. You don't have to agree with me. Amen. They met daily. And we don't have time to come to church two services a week and a prayer meeting once a month. I, there's a problem with the, uh, with the 21st century church. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. This church, oh, we don't have time for that. Honey, if you don't have time for that, you don't have time for anything else. You need to change your schedule and your way of thinking. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord, and you want to know because they did this, the Lord added to the church daily. daily. The Lord added to the church daily. Because they got together daily. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We'll see someone every once in a while. It may come in every once in a while when we have a revival service. Uh, amen. You want to know why uh, we add to the church every once in a while? Because that's our, our style. That's our way of living. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's oh. true. Oh. Get quiet on me now. Yes, Woo! Amen. If you want to see the church being added to the church daily, then guess what? We need to be getting together with God daily. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 We need to be committed to this thing. The reason we don't have revival and outpouring like they did in the first church is because we're not as committed as they were in the first church. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord added to the church daily. I want to ask you this today. I want you to think about it yourself, little buddy. Amen. I want you to look at this. These things that we read in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 through 47. Amen. Is all of this happening in our church today? Yes. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, God, get a hold of us. Oh, I want revival, pastor. One day a week. <laughs> Woo! I've had people come to me and say, ask me, well, do you preach about this and do you teach about that? All the time. They never hear it. For one reason, they're never here. Mm -hmm. We want God to move in our life daily, but we want to do our thing once a week. Mm. They went to the temple daily. Not only did they go to the temple daily, Daily, but they got together daily. Oh, well, you know, it's a different day and time. They didn't have as busy schedules as what, as what we have, and, uh, and and they're not as a, they don't have as much going on as what we have. I tell you what, I guarantee you, if if the apostles have what we have, or, or, or if they had what we have, if they had the internet and they had social media. And they had all the tools that we have. Can you imagine? They turned the world upside down just by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. right. Just imagine what these people would have been able to do if they had the tools that we have. That's right. There's something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. Right. Come on. Come on. That's uh, right. uh, listen to me today. There's something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. We ought to be just a... Holy Ghost ought to be falling all the time. Right. Yeah. On our jobs, we ought to be laying hands on people and seeing them filled with the Holy Ghost. On our jobs, we ought to be seeing people healed. In the grocery store, we ought to be seeing things happening. Right. Yeah. Right. Just imagine. You see, we're going to have to give an answer for what we did with what we've got. Right. Look what they did with what they had. All they had was word of mouth. Right. And the scripture says they turned the world upside down. 
We've got every form of communication. We've got uh, so much that this world should be topsy-turvy with the gospel. Uh -oh. Hallelujah. It's not happening the way that it needs to happen, Chris. We need to get in harmony with the Word. We need to get in harmony. We can stay up late, to, amen, to watch a movie. Uh, amen. We can stay up late to, to, to play a game. Uh, amen. We can stay up late to, uh, 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 just to hang out. Uh, amen. But you talk about uh, getting together and having a prayer meeting uh, and praying uh, late into the wee hours of the night. Uh, Sister Cynthia, I guarantee you, uh, if, I, if we call uh, an all-night prayer meeting next Friday night. Uh, Come on, preacher. <laughs> It'll look worse than a Wednesday night here. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoa, we got to get in harmony. Folks, we've got a community. I want you to understand something. We have a community that we are responsible for reaching. We have friends and family that we are responsible for sharing the gospel with. Yes. Right. You got you got to get a hold of yourself. Yes. Somebody needs to get shook up right now. Uh -huh. Somebody needs to get, hallelujah, I, don't you sit there and fall asleep on me this morning. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to understand something today. Oh. Amen. You've got to get up. Right. I don't care if you're 8 or if you're 80. You've got to get up. And you've got to get into harmony with this thing. Amen. Why are you preaching like this today? Because it's our responsibility to get in sync with the good Lord. It's our responsibility to start turning this world upside down. I don't care if you work 50 or 60 hours a week. Amen. You still need to be here every time the doors open. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care how many eggs you got in your body, you still need to keep on coming. Yeah. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. Woo. I tell you what, amen. I don't know if there's something wrong with me, but I'm starting to feel aches like I've never felt before. Uh, amen. A lot, but I tell you what, I can stay at home. Man, my shoulder, I have a job. I, I have to do this all day for about four hours a day. This right here. Like this. Uh -huh. Not slow eating. Say, well, that's not much. Uh, you know, I, I, I have a package that weigh anywhere from an ounce to 70 pounds. Uh, Brother Harper, uh, for, for at least a good two to four hours uh, every day. My shoulder's been starting to uh, give me some problems. That's why I came up here this morning and got prayed for, uh, Brother Kennedy. I, I believe that God's going to touch my shoulder. Amen. Amen. And I could stay at home. Man, my shoulder just ain't feeling right. Or my shoulder is just not feeling right. <laughs> you know, hallelujah. Hey, you know, I, I can find, but I want you to know, woo, I'm going to come to church. Praise I'm God. I'm going to praise hallelujah. the Lord. I'm going to lift up my hand. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. I can, I can come to church. I can, young, hey, you young folks, listen to me. You, all, you people who sit on your duffs, you make me sick. Oh, sick. Yeah. yeah, and this is self. This this is not me. I, I, this is indignation, holy indignation. I want you to understand something. I'm tired, baloney. <laughs> you are half my age. You have adults in here that work 60, 50, 60 hours a week, standing on their feet. Uh, they're they're twice, some of them three, four times your age, and they'll come in here and worship God. Praise God. God. Don't yes. give me that. You won't be tired when you're sitting in hell. All right. That's right. That's right. You'll That's be right. wishing you got up your off your little duck uh, and Praise get God. something. That's right. Psalms 140, I think it was 147 and 1. Uh, uh, Brother Harper, you were talking about praise earlier. Uh, amen. It says praise is comely. You know, the Lord likes that. He is attracted to praise. Yes. You can't praise the Lord. Guess what? The Lord's not going to be attracted to you. Wow. The Lord's not going to be looking your way. Right. Yeah. Woo! So I don't have a problem. Amen. They got together daily and praised the Lord. Praise they still God. had yeah. jobs they had to do. They yeah. still had families that they had to take care of. No, yeah. they didn't punch a clock like you and I punch a clock. But you want to know what? They had a whole lot more responsibility yes, than what, what we do. Yes. You see, because uh, all we have to do is take a couple of dollars and go to the grocery store and get our food. 
They had to grow their food. They had to barter for their food. They had a whole lot of stuff that could have taken a whole lot of their time. But you want to know what they said? Hey, God is more important than anything else. And sharing this message is more important than anything else. Hallelujah. Amen. I want this church to be like the first church. Right. Amen. 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 Can somebody say amen? amen. Well, I want to see miracle signs and wonders. Amen. I want to see prayer meetings that split the windows of heaven open and pour out the power of God in this community. what that church, the first church, really was and what it really did. Think about what this church really is and what it does. Folks, we got some work to do. Yes, we do. You've got some work to do. Yes, do. I've got some work to do. Amen. And I know I've been tired. I've been wore out here lately. But I want you to understand I've committed myself. I've made some commitments to some things. But they cannot take the place Amen. of my relationship with God. They cannot take the place of my work with God and for God. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 I started taking a couple of classes each semester. And for a, for a a, a dummy person like me, a, a couple of classes takes a lot of time. Yes, it does. It does. Mm -hmm. Whew. I, I, I realize why I didn't go to college. But I'm there now. So while you're young, folks, go, go, go. So it takes a lot out of me to take two classes a semester. But I can't use that for an excuse. I can't say, oh God, well, I, I'm going to school, so you, you don't have to move over here. I, I, I got some other things. I, I, I can't pray now, or I can't do this anymore, uh, because I got to do this, and it's really, really important. Oh no. I don't care what you're doing. God is more important than any of that. That's right. mm -hmm. My relationship with God is more important than my relationship with my wife. I have had people tell me things are bad at home, things are going wrong at home, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna to step back and, and I need to take care of my relationship at home. I've had people who have stepped down. I've had people who've stepped back and out. So I won't be able to be as, at church as much because I'm working on my, on my marriage. What? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. And you want to know what happens when you do that? Normally, not only do you end up losing your marriage, but you end up losing your relationship with God. That's right. That's right. If you'll take yeah. care of your relationship with God, He'll take care of everything else. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout yes. hallelujah. hallelujah. We've got to get in harmony. Yes, my relationship with my wife is very, very important. And it's an example and it's a light for the rest of the world to see. But I want you to understand my relationship with her is not more important than my relationship with God. Right. And if I get my relationship with, right with God and she'll get her relationship right with God, then I guarantee you our relationship with one another will be exactly what it's supposed to be. Uh, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. church. Can you say amen? amen? I want a book of Acts church. I'm tired of talking about what we're supposed to be, what we want, what we're going to have. We need to start having it. Right. And the only way we're going to have it is if we start getting in harmony right. with God. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So after we read about what the first church was really like, here's the question that we need to answer, and it's this. Can the 21st century church be like the first century church? Can solid rock be like uh, the first century church? Yes. yes. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Do we have what it takes to be what the first century church was? Yes. I'm sure you have your own ideas about what the church is. When you think of the church, what do you think about? Jesus. All right. Maybe you think about your mom dragging you out of bed on Sunday morning, making you take a bath and get dressed in some uncomfortable clothes. Maybe you think about people who acted one way on Sunday and then another way the rest of the week. Because of this, you made up your mind that church people were hypocrites. Maybe you, maybe you think of a place where you see friends you haven't seen all week. 
There are a million different things, positive and negative, that people think about when they think about the church. Hopefully, when you think about Solid Rock, uh, your thoughts are positive. Amen. 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 Hopefully, when you think about church, your pastor, the leadership, what goes on here, amen, it's all good. Yes. Amen. 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 Hopefully, when you think about church, it's about a family that you love and you care for. Hey, hopefully, when you think about church, your thoughts are, oh, I can't wait to get there. Amen. Woo. Amen. Glory. Woo. Amen. And, and if you're not that way now, there'll be a day when you get that way. That's right. You get laid up in a hospital for uh, eight weeks. Uh, That's right. Not able to go anywhere. You become bedridden. Nobody coming and visiting you. And you're there all alone. Your thoughts of the church will be a little bit different. Yes. You wind up, uh, amen, uh, living in an alley all alone. You wind up homeless. Your idea of the church uh, may become different. Hey, I love the church. I love everybody in the church. Amen. I love the good, the bad, and the uh, ugly. Amen. Amen. I love the young and the old. I love the good good attitudes. Yes. I love those who have bad attitudes. Amen. I don't love bad attitudes. Amen. But I love those who even may have a bad attitude. I love the saint. And I love the sinner. I love everybody who walks in this door. I love those who are faithful. And I love those who find excuses not to be here. I love them all. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. In the end... We will think what we want about the church. But the question is, what does God think about the church? Uh -huh. Amen. You can think what you want to. Acts chapter 2 and verse 44 says, uh, Amen. All believers were together and had everything in common. All believers were together and had everything in common. There was a spirit of unity about this group of believers. Were they all alike? No, they were all different. This first church was made up of people from all over the world who had come from, from, from all over the world to celebrate Pentecost. Amen. And a lot of them stayed there. That's why they sold their stuff and they were taking care of each other because they hadn't went back home yet. They were staying there and God was forming the church. Then persecution broke out. This is another Bible study. Uh, and those people went back to their homes and where they were from. And that's one of the things that helped spread the gospel. And that's one of the things that helped spread uh, the, the, the Word of God. Was because they got there, they got rooted and grounded, they got the Holy Ghost. Uh, and then when persecution uh, got they he said, hey, woo, uh, it's time for me to go. Amen. And that was God's way of, of getting the, the message spread throughout the world. Uh, but, but what does God think of this church? The believers were all together and they had everything in common. Folks, when we come here together, we've got to have everything in common. No, we don't look alike. We don't act alike. We don't think the same. We've got a, a whole bunch of different ideas. But when we gather here together, we are here in one mind and one accord to lift up the name that is above every name. And that name is Jesus. We are united on one front and that is Jesus, Jesus, yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. That is you, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen? amen. We don't do the same job when we leave here, but we all represent the same creator and the same maker. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 We've got, we have one purpose, and that's to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise right. God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. When God thinks about the church, I think He thinks about this verse. Look at it again. All believers were together and had everything in common. The church is a community of people working together. We are working together. We're not working against one another. We are working together. We are all united on one front. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. That's the New Testament. Yes. Amen. Yes. We're here not to put forth your ideas, but to put forth God's ideas. Yes. We're not here to get people uh, to win over to our way of thinking. We're here to get them to win one over to His way of thinking. Yes. 
Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. They were all together and had everything in common. We must be working together. One translation of this verse simply says, and all believers were in wonderful harmony. Woo! Harmony. Yes, it's a nice place. Unity. Woo! Hallelujah. Something that wins and draws people in here. Hallelujah. The things that you do in the service should be drawing people in here. Can you say amen? amen. The way that you uh, act and the way that you look when you come in here should be drawing people to you. Can you say amen? amen. One voice. Everybody say one voice. One voice. In order to have harmony, you have to have at least two voices. But some of the best harmony comes when you blend three voices together. A three-part harmony is basic, yet it's complete. What a beautiful sound when three voices blend together to create a sound that makes the angels jealous. When the soprano and the alto, alto and the tenor parts are perfectly combined as if there's just one voice that's singing, it's beautiful. Yet at the same time, it's very simple. Folks, when the church is working in harmony, harmony there's nothing more beautiful than that. There's nothing more beautiful than a church that is united. A church that cares for one another and is working together for one reason. I want you to imagine that today, that the first voice of the church, the voice is the word together. Everybody say together. together. What the Scripture says, remember what it says, all believers were together. When we think about... Where we are in the Scriptures, Acts 2 is the birth of the church at Pentecost where 120 were filled with the Spirit in the upper room. Just a few verses earlier in the same chapter, Peter had preached the first revival to thousands of people who had gathered together in Jerusalem for a Jewish religious holiday. And when Peter finished preaching, many were cut to the heart and asked what should they do. And Peter outlined the plan of salvation. He said, repent. Be baptized. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, and that day, 3,000 people were added to the church. Now a few verses later, we see those 3,000 people becoming the church uh, and living out their new faith. Uh, I mean, they were listening and acting upon the teachings of the apostles. Everyone was filled with awe and wonder because miracles and signs were happening all around them. Why were they happening? Because they were there together. Yes. Just that's it. That's the simplicity of it. They yes. were together. You want to see an outpouring? You want to see miracles like you've never saw before? Then we have got to get together. They were in the same place. I also think it tells us about their attitudes. They were in the same place. But they also had everything in common. Together they were witnessing the beginning of the movement that would bring down the Roman Empire, that would change the face of the world. And why would it do this? Because the believers were together. Not only physically, but also spiritually. God's idea of the church is a community of believers who are working together. Working together for a common goal. Working together for a common purpose. And working together so our brothers and sisters in Christ can be blessed. Working together to tell this city about Jesus Christ like a family. We are the church. The church prays together. Amen. The church prays together. Amen. The church worships together. Amen. The church encourages together. Amen. The church loves together. Amen. The church builds together. Amen. The church weeps together. Amen. The church laughs together. Amen. Why? Because together we're better and stronger than we are apart. We need each other and the world needs us to be together. Right. Rayford needs us to be together. Yes, Amen. Yes, Might be saying, Pastor, all that sounds good. But I'm not sure. I don't know if I fit into all this togetherness. I've always been a lone ranger. I've just always been out there on my own. That's your problem. I, I, I don't need anybody. I just need me and Jesus. Oh, hold on a minute. That's not the way God works. I'll take care of myself. Oh, no, you won't. You will not. I'm going to go out on my own. It's just going to be me and Jesus. I'll be, I'll be all right. No, you will not. That's not God's design. 
God's design is Him, you, and others. Amen. Amen. Together. Yes. Working together. Where are you today? I know you're in this building, but where are you today? Where do you see yourself fitting in this church? Which voice do you want to be in this three-part harmony? I think, well, I'm just a teenager. I don't have anything to add. What do I have to offer to help the church be together? I'd say you add so much value to our church. Our children and our young people add so much value to this church. Our teens and our children bring an energy and a freshness to our church services. Some, some may think, why do we have so many kids in this church? What would Solid Rock look like if we had no children or young people in attendance? It'd be, it would be dead. And you think it looks bad right now? It looks real bad. Hallelujah. We need our children. We need our young people. We need them to grow up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. We also need them to stay. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. We need them to grow and have families. Amen. And, and raise their children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Amen. We need our children and our young people. Can you say amen? amen. We need our ladies. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. The ladies keep us together with their wisdom and their strength. Amen. Yes, they do. Some of you face terrible odds just to get to the house of God, but yet you come. Yes. You inspire all of us to keep living for God and pressing on even in the face of adversity. Those are, who are here with us and are not yet believers, you help us to be together. It's because of those who don't know, who do not yet know Jesus, uh, that Solid Rock exists. And the purpose uh, of telling you about the good news of Jesus uh, keeps us doing what we do. Can you say amen? amen. We are here because uh, of those who are yet to accept and those uh, who are yet to receive Jesus Christ. Can you imagine what kind of church this would be if we had no men in it? Men, I want you to understand something. Those who are here and those who are not here. And those who may, be, who may watch this and listen to this in another venue, I want you to understand your church needs you. This church needs men to come here. Young men, you need to be here. Some of you are getting close to 20 years old. You're becoming big boys now. You're not too big for the church. Amen. You may see other men who are not faithful to this church. Don't you look at them for their example. That's right. That's right. You look at men who are here every time the doors are open. You look at men who take care of their families. You look at men who do what it takes to put food on the table Amen. and still pay their tithes. You, need to, you don't need to grow up and be like somebody who's not here. You need to grow up and be a faithful man of the house of God. Praise God. Yes. If you're not that way now, you need to get there. Yes. Daddies, grandpas, uncles, let me tell you, you need to be an example that others can look at. The church needs children and young people. The church needs ladies. The church needs right. men. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. The church needs that. The church needs young and the church needs old. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. We need to imagine a church that works together. We need to imagine a church that is willing to stay united and lift up the name of Jesus regardless of what happens. We need to picture a church where members are so concerned about the needs of others that they're willing to sell something so the one hurting can be helped. That's right. Amen. Praise. Oh, get quiet on that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Visualize a community of people who are believers who are sold out to the Word of God and, let, and willing to let it rule every part of their daily lives. Everything. Mm -hmm. They apply the Word of God to every part of their life, Brother Harper. Every part. Not just the parts of their life. Church working together. Mm -hmm. I ask Caitlin to come. Imagine a picture of a church working together to make a difference in the lives of the poor, the homeless, and the orphan. 
Picture a community of people working together to reach out to those who have never heard the true gospel. When God sees the church, I believe He wants to see the picture of a community that is working together. Now we need to let that spirit sink in to your spirit. Let that vision sink into your spirit. And let that vision be the vision that you have of solid rock. A church that's working together. A church that's doing whatever it takes to lift up the name of Jesus. Not only lift up the name of Jesus, but to lift up my brother and my sister. A church that is reaching out to those who are without and those who are in need. I want to see a church that is committed in every area of their life. And since the Word of God is just as applicable on Monday or on Friday as what it is on Sunday. You see the church, your picture of the church. I want to ask you, where are you at in that picture? That picture of helping, serving, reaching, and caring. How do you fit in that church? We say every Sunday morning at the end of our announcements, Solid Rock, we love God, we love people, and we serve the world. Where do you fit at? in that picture of this church loving God, loving people, and serving the world. As you bow your heads and you close your eyes, young and old, men and women, everyone, there are things solid rock needs. There are things that you need to be so that this church be together. I want to ask you today to come down to this altar and connect with God. Say, Lord, I know what the church is supposed to look like. I want to, I know what people who are a part of the church are supposed to look like. I know what the picture of the church should look like. Lord, help me make sure I look like and I am not just on the outside but on the inside I am what you want me to be Lord I am a member of the church I am a member and I'm doing all that I can to encourage and to strengthen is there somebody here today it would say, Lord, work on me. Lord, make me what I ought to be. Lord, help me. Help me. I invite you to come down here and open up your hearts and your minds. I invite you, church family, to come down here and say, Lord, touch me. Lord, touch me. There's nothing more important, Lord Jesus, than being what you want me to be. There's nothing more important, Lord Jesus, than that beautiful harmony of a people who are working together to be what you've called them to be. Lord Jesus, I need you today. I need you today more than I need anything else, Lord Jesus. I need you. If you're here today, you've never repented of your sins. You've never been baptized in Jesus' name. You've never been filled with the Holy Ghost. Today's the day that that can happen. If you're not part of a church family, you want to be. You want to be a part of a body of believers. Today's the day for you to become a part of a family. That will love you. That will care for you. That will encourage you lift you up. Oh Lord, have your way, God. Hallelujah. Lord, wherever you're at today, just reach out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Where you see, reach out to the Lord. Oh God, have your way in me, Lord Jesus. Touch my heart, touch my soul, Lord. Touch my heart. What you want me to be, Lord. God, what you want me to be, Lord. I want to be what you want me to be, Lord. I want to be what you want me to be, Lord. I want to be what you want me to be, Lord. Oh, God. 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 O